All right, guys, this is chapter six, The Revolution Within. So we are in the time period of the Revolutionary War and right after. And these are very uh, important years because not only are the Americans trying to gain their independence from the British, but they're also trying to set up a democracy, um, which there had been none in the world at this very time. Um, so many of these Americans had a dream of equality. And colonial America had the potential to become really democratic. They were upset with King George III's rule. They viewed him as a tyrant, and they wanted to uh, establish a government that had no, no king. Um, in the very first constitution we're going to have, we don't even have a president. So this absence of a hereditary aristocracy and also the weak churches that are set up in this country, uh, very different from Europe, which saw a very strong uh, Roman Catholic Church and, and very strong monarchies throughout. Uh, as you guys know, that the Declaration of Independence uh, establishes this notion of equality, and uh, those that were unequal were all that were not white men that owned property. So we have this ideal that all men are created equal, but it's going to take many generations until it's actually achieved. And you can make arguments we're still trying today, but it, it was a start, and, and we can thank our founding fathers for that. Um, so expanding the political nation. Um, so during the revolution, democracy meant a form of government that served the interests of the people. So government by the people, for the people, um, rather than just supporting the elite. Um, so you know the idea that anybody can can uh, rise up in America and, and become president um, you know, still rings true today. Uh, in the colonies that became states, uh, members of all classes debated the idea of universal male suffrage. You know, the idea that any male can vote, and as we talked about in class with New Jersey, um, even women were, were granted the right to vote for a short time. Uh, religious toleration was a big issue, and of course the abolition of slavery. Some of their um, some of these things will be achieved, but obviously others will not. Uh, the revolution in Pennsylvania. So the colonial elite opposed the idea of independence. They were a very strong loyalist following. But radicals like Thomas Paine and Benjamin Rush, uh, they attacked the idea of proper, property requirements for voting. So Pennsylvania was the first state to, um, to get rid of this property requirement for voting. They set up a one-house legislature. They abolished the idea of a governor. Uh, they were truly trying to set up a democratic system within their state. Um, other states like New Jersey and Vermont uh, took measures that also were um, supportive of this expanding democracy. So these new constitutions, um, the states established republican governments. So authority is based on the consent of the governed. Okay, now for religious toleration, we had talked about during the Revolutionary War, um, the Catholic Americans who had once been persecuted were were now being treated uh, better. And a big reason for this was the involvement of France in the Revolutionary War. You can make an argument we wouldn't have won the war without the help of the French and many uh, of these Protestant uh, British colonists who are now Americans um, saw the French in a different light and therefore um, Catholicism as well. Uh, the Second Continental Congress is even going to invite the Catholic inhabitants of Quebec to join the Protestant American revolutionaries. Um, so we're going to see this uh, welcoming of, of Catholics America, Catholic Americans uh, after the war. In terms of the Founding Fathers and religion, uh, you know, Thomas Jefferson considered himself a deist, so you know, the idea that you know, there's a God, but not one that is all controlling and, and a God that will let people here on earth and in this country set up their own type of government without involvement. So this idea of separating the government and, and church is going to um, be very successful in this country. Um, revolutionary leaders like Jefferson, uh, John Adams, James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, they want to avoid that religious driven political conflict that was just so prevalent throughout Europe for centuries and centuries. And it worked, we were able to, to do that. Uh, economic freedom. After the revolution, a distinction had uh, hardened between freedom and slavery. Uh, we're going to see a push away from indentured servitude. So people were either completely free or were completely enslaved. Uh, Northern economy was based on free labor, where you work for a wage. 
um, where you own a farm or a shop and you make money. And the southern economy was based largely on slave labor. The Loyalists. A large percentage of Americans were loyal to the British government during the war, 20 to 25 percent, uh, particularly in New York, Pennsylvania, and the backcountry of Georgia and the Carolinas. Uh, even 20,000 of the Loyalists had fought for the British during the war. So after the war, a lot of them had to get out. 100,000 of them were exiled. Um, or chose to emigrate away from the new United States. Many moved to Britain, to Canada, to uh, British-held islands in the Caribbean. Uh, their property was taken away from them. They, were, uh, they lost their voting rights, um, and they endured severe punishments and, and sometimes death. Um, here's a map that shows uh, loyalist support in those areas uh, that were just mentioned. Uh, but there were many obstacles to abolition. Um, Many of the Founding Fathers owned slaves. In fact, the first uh, five presidents, uh, only John Adams did not own slaves, and the others did. Jefferson, who wrote about all men are created equal, was a slave owner himself who fathered children with slaves. Uh, Jefferson, uh, Washington was a slave owner, I think the third largest slave owner in the country. Um, so many of them argued that slavery for blacks allowed freedom for whites. You know, Jefferson commented that allowed him to pursue his leisure activities. He was a man of many talents, and that's because he didn't have to work. Um, he had African-American slaves doing all of the work on his plantation. Uh, the rights of self-government and protection of property uh, prevented the government from interfering with, with slaves, with human property. And also the Founding Fathers uh, wanted to form a new nation, set up a democratic government, and they kind of put the slavery issue for the next generation to, to handle. And unfortunately for African Americans, that's going to result in nearly another century of enslavement. And the Native Americans. Uh, many of the Native Americans fought on the side of the British. Um, some fought on the side of the colonists. Um, but whatever side they were on, the, the uh, colonists and now the new Americans are going to keep pushing west, claiming Indian lands uh, east of the Mississippi, and they'll keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Uh, many Americans saw the war as an opportunity to secure more land by expelling the Indians. Even George Washington had sent an expedition out to um, eliminate the uh, Native Americans in, in New York, and there were devastating results. Uh, the cause of general liberty. Slaves challenged their bondage as revolutionaries fought for, for freedom or for liberty. Uh, there were many, many Native American, sorry, African Americans that um, tried their best to resist uh, bondage and to um, you know, make their cause known. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking at some poetry and, um, in class that, that shows their, their struggle. Uh, petitions for freedom. New England slaves asked to end the tyranny of slavery. Um, so we're going to see um, some slaves gaining their freedom. Uh, the British offered freedom to slaves that fought with them. Many of them emigrated to England or other British colonies. And we'll see a gradual emancipation in the North. But it really was gradual. and It's not going to be overnight. And slavery will exist in the North well after the Revolutionary War. Uh, in Connecticut, even into the 1840s, which was you know, a good 60 years after the Revolution. Uh, abolition in the North, Man many states offered this emancipation. Uh, children were freed upon reaching adulthood, and free black communities were established. These communities had their own leaders, uh, independent churches, schools. Um, so now we're going to see a clear boundary. We have free states, and we're going to have slave states, and this issue will not go away and will continue to divide the country until the culmination of the uh, American Civil War. And finally, we have revolutionary women. Uh, John Adams' wife, Abigail, you know, said to her husband, remember the ladies when you're setting up a new government uh, and rights in the new nation. But they didn't. Um, women showed their, their courage and their valor and their toughness fighting in the army, um, you know, in, incognito, and um, took on a strong role in the war, yet they still were denied these rights. Um, they were viewed as, you know, their role was in the home. Um, their obligations were to raise a family and to, you know, make citizens out of their children. Um, so unfortunately, the Republican citizen in this new 
in this new country is going to be male. Um, but women's time will come, it's just going to take a long time. So we are going to see some, you know, some positive steps towards liberty and equality, but we will still have a long way to go. But this was the beginning.